please give a warm Kemp welcome to Alexander Smith. Hello. Hi there. Uh, Luis Redfera. Hello. And John Everly. Hey there. Great to see everyone. Uh, please go ahead and share your slides and we'll let your presentation get started. Hello and welcome to our presentation on using monkey report to extend JAMS reporting. In this presentation, you will learn how to set up monkey report to extend to your JAMF instance. Hi, I'm John. I'm a lead desktop engineer and a Mac admin at a K-12 school district. Um, you can find me at Slack, Twitter, and GitHub and under the, under the user handle of Tuxedo. You probably know some, you probably know me most as the one who makes all the fun modules for monkey report. I'm currently at around 35 to 40 modules. Every other month or so, I still make new ones, rewrite old ones, update current ones. I'm still making them as much as I can. And I'm also joined with my co-presenter, Alex. Hi there. Um, my name is Alex. I am an IT engineer at Sprinkler, which uh, focuses on the unified front office uh, Essentially, you can find me, uh, especially right now, uh, I recently deployed Monkey Report in my own company as well. So you can find me in that channel. I mean, a couple other ones. I'm also looking into inventory right now. So I'm hanging out in Snipe, asset tracking. Uh, and I just moved to South Florida. So I'm hanging in there. It's a little quiet right now. So if you happen to be down here, you know, feel free to reach out. Um, and uh, I'm going to introduce my uh, friend, Lemur, in charge, Luis. Hi there, I'm Mac Lemer, or as my human friends call me, Louise. I'm an IT manager at a media company's digital division, and I also happen to oversee all things Apple for our larger support groups. You can find me in Slack as Mac Lemer, talking about food and lemurs, lemurs and food. So let's get into it. Why are we here? I mean, the ultimate answer to that question is 42. But for the here and now in this presentation, we want to have a discussion on Jamf and Monkey Report. We all know and love Jamf, but sometimes Jamf needs a little help. So today we will provide an overview on how you can use Monkey Report to extend Jamf reporting. Why not just use Jamf? I'm glad you asked that question. Has this ever happened to you, your boss? So yeah. Um, Alex, John, I'm going to need a report on how many hard drives are failing. Now, what would you do? Well, what I would do is scamp over to John and ask for a report. John will now give us a quick and dirty overview on how to set up my report. Over to you, John. Cool. Thank you, Louise. So we're going to do a quick and dirty overview on how to set up my report. Again, this should not be used in production as we're pretty much doing this for demo product um, purposes, but to see how quick and easy it is. So Monkey Report is an open source software that you can get on GitHub. Um, everything is included right there and it will run on pretty much any web server that is PHP 7.2 or higher. It doesn't contain its own SQLite database, so you can certainly use that, but if you have more than say like 10 modules or a few, say about 20 machines tracking in, it can get a bit, bit slow due to, the, due to the limitations of SQLite. So we do recommend MySQL for our database, and that is a recommended thing to use. And of course, because it runs on PHP, it is hardware and operating system agnostic. So as long as it can run PHP, you're all set. Uh, we have it running on uh, Raspberry Pis, we have it running on IIS in hypervisor situations. We have it running on Ubuntu, um, on ESXi. We have it running in AWS in the cloud. So pretty much if you can run um, PHP, it can run Monkey Report. So let's do a really quick dirty overview on how to do that. So we're going to assume that you've already downloaded Monkey Report from GitHub and you have extracted the zip archive to your desktop. So we're going to change directory 
into the monkey report folder. Then we need to echo out um, the no authentication auth off method into your environmental file. Now, no auth is really bad in that anybody who knows the URL of your monkey report can just go and see all your information. So this is really, really bad to use in production. This should only be used for demos and maybe developmental in instances. And after that, we're going to echo out a whole bunch of modules because by default it only uses five or so modules. So these are some of the more commonplace modules. We're going to install things like Bluetooth, users, network, displays information, software update, a whole bunch of fun common ones. We're going to echo that out into our environmental file. Lastly, we're going to run please migrate. This command basically goes through and sets up the tables within the database for the monkey report instance. This is really neat in that you do not need to do anything with the monkey report instance or excuse me, the monkey report database. It's all handled automatically by monkey report. So as changes come with new modules or monkey report version changes, you can either run the please migrate command or once monkey port is set up, you can run the migrations from the web interface. And lastly, we're going to tell PHP to start up a web server on localhost port 8080 from the public folder within monkey report. Kindly note, this was a quick and dirty setup. Please, please do not do this in prod. Please see the link, please see the link below on how to properly secure your system. We now return you to your presentation. OK, so because of that warning, that's all cool. For now, we're not really doing this in prod, which is just a demo. So now we need to create the bunk report package and we're going to sudo. We're going to curl directly into batch sudo bash. And that will basically generate a installer package right on our desktop. Now from this package, you can go around the flash drive, install it on all your computers. You can push it out using Monkey. You can email your end users and tell them to, tell them to install it if they're an admin. Or as we're going to see Alex do here shortly, we're going to install it using Jamf. So I'll pass that package off to Alex and we'll go over how to install this using Jamf. Thank you for that package, John. Um, Very welcome. <laughs> So uh, we went a little uh, dirty with that um, uh, with the monkey report instance itself. So for this one, we're I, I wanted to make it a little bit more tailored towards um, something that you might actually put into production. So just kind of keep that in mind that um, for the Jamf integration, I get a little bit closer. Um, so that warning still applies. You know, make sure that you secure everything. But we're 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 going to kind of show it a little bit more uh, evolved um, portion of this. So uh, for the Jamf integration, we do need a couple of things. It's, it's really not that hard to set up. And um, what we'll need here starting off is that monkey report instance, which uh, John's already set up for us. And um, John has also given us that package, which is the next thing that we need. So we do need that package. We're going to be um, uh, deploying that uh, package with a policy. So it makes it super easy for everyone. We're also going to add a passphrase script so when the clients go to communicate with uh, the monkey report instance, they will need to have that um, key. Uh, otherwise, the server will be like, I don't know you and I'm not going to deal with you. So um, we didn't show that in um, the demo instance, but I did want to add it just to show you that like how you would secure it um, a little bit better. And uh, after that, we are going to need what is called the client runs policy. So um, you can do this in a bunch of different ways and I'll get to it when I get to it, but um, we do need something to actually trigger um, the clients to report back to the monkey report instance. And then finally, some modules have dependencies. So, you know, Louise had asked, you know, hard drives are failing and we need a report on that. Well, we're going to be using the smart module, which requires the smart tools to be installed ahead of time. So we're going to have another link for that. So um, just know that some modules have dependencies, so you just want to make sure to, to check with the module just to make sure that everything you have everything set up for that. So let's start off with the package. I'm going to assume here that uh, you've been working with Jamf and you know how to um, upload packages, so I'm not going to go into too much detail about this. Um, so we have the 
package wise, we have the um, what John created, the actual client. We have the smart monitor monitoring tools, and um, those are the only packages that we have to deploy at this point. Next up, we have the passphrase script. So essentially, you can do this different ways. You can use a configuration profile if you'd like. Um, here, we just created a, um, a script to uh, deploy that through a policy. So what it's doing is writing the um, passphrase to the monkey report plist. And you can find all this information on, on the monkey report wiki as well. Next up, we have the dependency package. So as I mentioned, we had smart tools and we want to um, incorporate that. So we uploaded that as well. And now the client runs policy. I know it seems like a lot. I promise you it's really not that much. Uh, the client's run policy is essentially just uh, in this case, uh, we're leveraging a um, a policy that uh, utilizes the um, which we call it the system and processes. So if you move to the next uh, slide, you'll see that um, we have the execute command run the monkey report runner. Again, there's different ways of doing this. This is just one way of doing it. Like um, another way is to have a script that um, actually has the um, the post flight um, script to add uh, the necessary file to trigger the monkey report um, client to respond back as well. But just wanted to keep this super simple. So uh, this is how we did it for uh, this one. And really that that's all you need to deploy monkey report uh, through Jamf. Sorry about that. Um, so I, I say, why don't we get back uh, and start looking at what monkey report is uh, starting off with dashboards. Cool. So our guests have a dashboard. Uh, better known as making it pretty for the manager because managers they like pretty buttons they like graphs they like colors they like things that can make them show their higher ups and be like look we're doing stuff they don't want they usually don't want like raw numbers in like a cell spreadsheet or just like you typed up little quick notes in slack or email they like pretty things so we're gonna make this pretty for the manager so dashboards are basically YAML files. And this picture here is a picture directly taken from the wiki. So we're going to go over what a dashboard YAML file looks like. So at the top there, we have our display name key, and it is my awesome dashboard. This one is an optional key, but it is recommended. And then we have a hotkey. So if you're going around monkey report, you hit Q on your keyboard, and it will take you directly to my awesome dashboard. This key is as um, optional as well. Then we have our rows. So we have our three rows here, and within each row we have our widgets. So we have row one, and that contains the client and messages widget. Row two contains new clients widget, then so on and so forth. The way that the that that ooh can't talk today. The way that the dashboards work is that you can have as many rows as you want. You can have as many clients within your dashboard that uh, you can have as many widgets within your rows as you want. Um, you can have all the widgets. You can have one widget. You can arrange them however you want. Dashboards are very flexible and you can have pretty much everything you can ever imagine within the dashboard. So here's a static picture of the dashboard that we were just talking about. So we have our client activity, our events, our monkey, free space, and uptime widgets. And at the top, we have the name of our monkey report instance. So it's Tuxedo's demo monkey report. And we have our drop down listings and we have some configuration options. Then you have your username and the help button. So let's go ahead here and go into the, into the demo lab to get the information and do a quick overview of it all. We're going to load up Firefox. Cool. So here's our demo lab, which is pretty much what we just saw a picture of. And let's see here. So we have our little widgets we can look at. We can click on things. We can look around things. But Luis wanted a report on failing hard drives. So we can go to reports and click on smart stats reports. And the smart stats reports 
or excuse me, the reports are basically custom or all they're pre-built widgets. Oh, I can't talk at all. Reports are basically pre-built dashboards of groupings of mod of groupings of widgets. And as you can see in here, we have a whole bunch of pre-built groupings of widgets. So within the smart stats hey, report, John? we can yes. I'm not seeing the uh, demo screen. It could just be the manager me and me that's um, behind. But can you share oh. the screen pretty please? I am sharing the screen. Oh no, this team's not working. I guess we're only seeing the slide. Uh, it's, oh, it's taken over any other window you've got. Oh, silly teams. Let's see, stop sharing. Start sharing. I'll share that. OK, can anyone see it again? Yep. Cool. I'm sorry about that little glitch. Apparently, thank I clicked the wrong you. button. Thank you, Luigi, for catching that. Oh, yes, thank you. So let's start that over again. So here is our live dashboard. So what we see here is pretty much what we just saw a picture of previously. So you can have all your clients checking in here. You have pretty buttons. You have a whole bunch of information. You have a little pie chart. But Louise wanted a drop down, or she wanted not drop down. She wanted a report of smart stats. So we'll click on the, the report button there. And the reports are basically pre-built dashboards of groupings of widgets. So we'll click on smart stats. And we can see here we have two widgets that are part of this module. And the one is smart stats reports. And we see that the drive is definitely failing. So we'll click on that. And Yoda has a failing hard drive. Not too good. It has 41,000 smart errors. The last error came on about 40,000 hours ago. That's an old Seagate momentous drive. You can see a whole bunch more information about that. So that right there is definitely a filling drive. So we will go ahead here. Apparently I went back. We will go ahead here back to that report. And then we want to see all the machines. So Yoda has four drives. The other ones are good, as are the other drives and the other computers. Let's go ahead and click Excel. We're going to open this. And of course, I clicked the wrong button again, and you guys can't see that. Why is team so confusing sometimes? Let's try this one more time. I want to share. I want to share that. OK, we should be good now. Sorry about the little glitch, glitch once again. All right, so here in Excel, we can definitely see a report. So we can see Yoda. It has one failing hard drive. We can see what kind it is. We can see all sorts of information about Yoda's drive. So we can filter that. And we want failed drives. And we'll just go ahead and save that and then email it off to Louise after the presentation. So she can see that and get all her information about that one failing drive. But let's get like a more zoomed in look on Yoda's drive. So I click on Yoda. And then this is information about Yoda's drive. What we see here is pretty much every is every single smart attribute about that drive. So we see the temperature, it's about 111.2 degrees Fahrenheit or 44 degrees Celsius. We can see it has zero high fly rights, power cycle count is 696, and just a whole bunch of information about that drive. We can see down here, the Yoda also contains a Seagate SSHD, a Western Digital Blue Drive, and a Seagate SSD or a Samsung SSD. And those three are all healthy. So what we're going to click the show button up here. And these are client tabs. These are basically um, extended information about the one client. So we're going to click on summary to see a quick summary of Yoda. So we can see here that Yoda has two cores, eight gigs of memory. We can see what type of MacBook it is. We can see when it last checked in, storage, software information, a whole bunch of really cool stuff. Let's take a quick look at some other fun ones. 
I like the battery one. This one's pretty cool. We can see the charge remaining. Battery is healthy. It's made about two years ago now, and its temperature is 87 degrees. Um, it's connected with a 94 watt power supply, and the three cells within the battery are all about 1.4 volts, so they're all happy. Let's see, what other fun ones do we have in here? We have, let's look at the power. So we have how the machine is set up for power. So this is pretty much the PM set command. We have, it'll turn off or it's going to stand by for three hours. Hibernate mode is three or safe sleep. The, mach the machine is thermally happy and nothing is preventing it from going to sleep. User is active and there's no background tasks. That's pretty cool to see. Another favorite of mine is the temperatures. So we can see how hot certain parts of the machine are. So the palm rest is about 84 degrees. CP1 is 139 degrees and the information like that. And so there's pretty much everything imaginable in here that we can look at. Um, Alex, do you have any particular one that you would like to, to take a look at? Hmm, this definitely is not scripted at all. But I think we should look at the Jamf one. Jamf, okay. <laughs> so uh, when it comes to, uh, and, and, uh, it's obvious I'm the, the, the Jamf speaker uh, in this presentation. Uh, when it comes to uh, Monkey Report, what's really cool about it is like you get all this cool reporting stuff. But you know you have your stuff in Jamf, and you're like, well, jumping between the two is not fun. Well, you don't have to worry about that because there's an integration between the two, as demonstrated right now. Um, but what I like about it is it kind of gives like that single pane of glass for tech. So if I'm like, hey, you know, go help this person out, um, someone can just go right in here and kind of troubleshoot like for the full spectrum. So you know, right here we have the stuff that you'd see in Jamf, like general hardware information, extension attributes. Uh, it And um, if you go into uh, my personal favorite, which is the management section, you will um, be able to see all like the pending commands, the configuration profiles. And uh, if you click on computer groups, and this is not in Jamf, and maybe it will be in Jamf uh, the, you know, next time I log in, right? Um, you can actually see on the client level, the um, groups that it belongs to. So when it comes to like troubleshooting, like let's say a package, um, like, hey, why is, this, why is this not getting to the person's machine? Maybe there's conflicting smart groups, uh, static groups, all that fun stuff. So um, what's just like really cool is that you can kind of take that jam for information and there's a separate integration for that module where, um, which is, we'll have it at the end of this, but you can also see on the monkey report wiki um, how it, uh, how to do that integration. You just need a um, an account with uh, read writes to Jamf and you're good to go um, for the most part. So um, if we needed to, let's say this data wasn't fully up to date, we can actually manually do a Jamf data poll as well. There's a button for that and you can. there's also a button to uh, view it directly in Jamf as well. Um, do keep in mind that you can also, um, if you've so choose to do it. It does take uh, a fair bit of time. You can do a full pull of all the machines uh, in Jamf by going into the admin section like John showing off right now. Click on Jamf and there's an option to uh, run a full pull. But you know, there it is going to take uh, for me and I have about a thousand machines. It, it it took like 15, 20 minutes to do do that. Um, it depends on your instance, all that fun stuff. But yeah, um, that is um, the Jamf uh, integration. And another cool integration that is kind of a part of the Jamf one is the extension attributes uh, module, which we should show you as well. Um, I was clicking through that. Um, what's in interesting about the extension attribute module is that it's taking advantage of Jamf's built in um, uh, extension attributes like system, so to speak. Um, what you would need to do is you would deploy these extension attributes um, to the clients themselves um, in a certain directory. I, I definitely recommend if this is something that you're interested, uh, definitely read on the, uh, about the module um, thoroughly just so that you know how it works and whatnot. But um, what, and you might 
be thinking, well, you just showed me in Jamf, uh, in the monkey report Jamf, uh, the extension attributes. Well, let's say that there might be some that you only want to use for the reporting purposes of monkey report. That's a, a good situation of how you would want to maybe have different extension attributes. But you could also, in theory, craft it so that um, you would pipe in uh, your own information using the extension attributes module. So um, if there was something outside of the, the scope, you know, you could kind of craft your own custom ways of getting information into monkey report. Like let's say there wasn't a module available for something that you'd want. So um, I definitely uh, recommend reading through it. Uh, the two examples that we have right here is Yoda with um, the GPU extension attribute and um, also the uh, log attribute, which gives you the last 20 logs that was um, going on uh, on the machine. And um, one that I really like to see is the Chrome extensions because um, the company I work for is a Chrome shop, uh, not a Chrome shop, but a Google shop. And um, we do have a lot of Chrome browsers and that means a lot of extensions. So um, one of my favorites right now is um, the Chrome extensions uh, extension attribute uh, in Monkey Report. So uh, that's just one idea. You can get really creative with it. And um, John, I think that's all I have to talk about um, these these jam stuffs. Cool. I mean, that's kind of awesome. Um, but for some other reports, you know, I just came out of a meeting with Jimmy, and he's saying that all the Macs in his group are crashing. These are really bad optics. Can you give me a report on the leading causes of KPs or crashes? Sure can, Andrew. These. Thankfully, Monkey Port has a module for that built in, and we are already using it. So we'll go to listings and kernel panics. And we can see here we already have two kernel panics one from Yoda and one from Lando. So that Yoda machine should probably definitely come in. It's kernel panicking and it has a bad drive. So we can see the kernel panic log, what caused it, when it happened, the version Mac, the model, the kernel panic type, and Anonymous UUID and full panic log. So we'll click that blue button for view. And this is Yoda's panic log. So we can see here the entire panic log itself, why it crashed, back traces, kernel information, extension information, and nothing in here really is a third party extension. So that's pretty good. So Yoda's probably having some weird problems. It should definitely come in. So let's look at Lando's. Okay. Lando is still pretty, pretty good looking or not good looking, but similar looking, of course. So we can go ahead and click on Excel, open that with Excel. And there we have our same report right and ready for Louise. We can go ahead and email that right off to her so you can see what's been crashing and everything. And of course, she'll probably ask us, hey, can we can she log in and of course, why not? Yay, thanks for the report. I have one other question. I read this article in Sky Mall. Are we protect? Well, well, to check if we're protect, we can go ahead here and to the security report look at all of our fun security widgets and protect yes we are indeed protect at seven machines um that doesn't sound like a lot but there's only seven machines in this demo instance so we are 100 percent protect so we can go ahead take a screenshot of that send it off to her and she'll look at those fun almost lickable buttons you have watermelon flavored and you have candy apple so she'll probably try to lick her screen because she likes fun little fruit little buttons and things. It's super cool. So I like these reports. Can you tell me what else we can report on here? Sure can. So let's look at the widget gallery. The widget gallery has about 234 widgets. Um, this is not all the widgets as we do not have every single module enabled, but we have most of them. We have a whole bunch of really fun widgets. Uh, we have ones for 32-bit applications. This is great if you're upgrading to 1015 Catalina and you need to find those old applications to 
peel them out. And we can scroll down. We have a whole bunch. We have caching media and iCloud caching. If you have caching turned on, you have CrowdStrike. We have ports on your disk types. We have gatekeeper status. We have if you're signed into iCloud contacts, find my Mac and stuff like that. We have one for the battery repair eligibility program for the 15 inch MacBook Pro. We have ones for what generation of PowerPoint you have and if it's from the App Store or not. We have, oh, we have a fun little graph of registered clients over time. We have ones for software update. We have tags. We have time zones. We have ones for Wi Fi users. So, so many widgets. And you can tell like what model widget is from, if that model is active, the file name of the widget, and where the widget physically lives in relation to the month report um, system applications. Now let's go ahead here and look at the module marketplace. This one's really cool, and I built this roughly about a month or two ago, and it's in monkey port version 5.5.1 and higher. This is a complete list of all first and third party modules um, available to you to use. We can see if they're enabled, if there's a version update, the latest version, who maintains it, where it's located. We can see the repo name for it and all sorts of really, really cool stuff for it. So, and of course we have 86 in there right now and there's a lot of them. And what you see here is generated on the fly dynamically, dynamically by the client, um, by the client web browser. So it pulls information down from GitHub and packages, compiles it using JavaScript, and you see everything here is live. And so let's go ahead and certificate. We have an update for, for the certificate module, version 1.4 to 1.5. It was updated on July 22nd and we installed it on the 20th. So we definitely need to go ahead and update that at some point. Then we have ones like the Archware P5. This one came out only a few days ago. So we can click on that one if we want to install it. And there we have our two composer commands. We can go ahead and install it. We can click on the monkey report wiki for more information on how to install it as well. And for these ones that are already installed, we can click on one and tell us the information about what UI views the module presents. And these are different things that like has two widgets, it has two listings, client tabs, reports, client detail widgets, which you saw on the summary screen. And they're really, really cool. So that is the module marketplace. And that I do believe is the conclusion of our presentation. Well, as someone said, that's all folks. Thank you for attending and I would ask if there are any questions, but I do see them in the live Q&A. So I'm going to read them out in the order they came in and um, John and Alex and or I if possible will be able to answer them. The first question is from Jeff. Our inventory, our inventory team uses Snipe IT for inventory. The Snipe IT setup uses the Apple model number as the basis for inputting new Macs. Jamf does not collect this number for inventory records. Would Monkey Report be able to collect that info and make it importable in importable into Snipe? Uh, I'll take this question. Um, I believe you're referring to the the model such as like MB, then some numbers and slash, then like LL and stuff like that. If we go back to our demo here. Um, actually, our demo instance has an older version of it. I'm actually in the process of, of updating the iBridge module to to contain and show the information. Um, so you would eventually see it right here in the iBridge. Um, but this is only for machines that have an iBridge or a T2, possibly T1 chip. Older machines, I don't think, contain this information. If they do, I haven't found it yet. Um, so yes, tentatively, um, once it's updated, you can get this information from iBridge, from the iBridge module. Um, and you can also pull it out of Monkey Report using the iBridge API, which um, hit us up on the Slack Monkey Report channel on how to really use the Monkey, um, the iBridge API to get out what you need from it. But 
the information will be there uh, at a later date. We are working on it right now. Thanks. Um, the next question, can we report on high processor hogs? Uh, I'll take this one. Um, monkey port does not really at this time show like the top five processes. It doesn't really do that. Um, what you can, the closest you can see is not really easy to see, of course, but the closest thing if, is if we go to Yoda or the machine, and then we want to go to, I believe it's usage stats. You can see processor usage. Of course, this is what it was when it last checked in, in Yoda's case, eight days ago. Um, and it does check in roughly every hour. High processes that are using CPU usage, we do not collect that information at this time. Would it be safe to say that monkey report is a snapshot in time as opposed to live reporting? Yes, monkey report is a snapshot in time. Generally, if machine is on and talking in, it's generally once every hour. Um, you can definitely reconfigure that to be five minutes, 15 minutes, every minute if you really want to. Um, that's very much not recommended. Um, but it is not live information. It is a snapshot in time and it does not do historical information. Uh, one or two modules, I think, like four modules at most, can do historical information, but it, it does not do historical information and there are currently no plans to make it live or do historical information. Thank you. Is there a write up on setting up monkey report on Google app engine standard? And can monkey report integrate with more than one jam instance? Uh, I'll take that one. Um, as far as I know, there's not a write up for, for the Google app engine. Um, if you make it work on there, we highly recommend you um, tell us how in the wiki, because that'd be fun and great for other people to see and make it work. Um, and for Jamf instances, uh, unfortunately, no, it can only work with one Jamf JSS at a time. Um, that is a limitation of how I built that module. It might be, it, it might be possible to make it work with more than one, but I would have to re-architecture a few things. Um, Put a feature request in for that. Um, the Jamf module is on the Tuxedo repo, so go ahead and put a feature request in so I know that people want that, and I can definitely take that into consideration when I start to redesign the Jamf module. Awesome, thanks. Is the KP module a default or does it require Jamf? Uh, the kernel panic module. Um, is a third party module. It's under the Tuxedo repo. Um, it does not require Jamf. The only module that requires a Jamf instance is the Jamf module. Great, thank you. Is there a Docker image for Monkey Report? I do believe there is a Docker image for it. Um, I'm not overly familiar with it, but I do believe it exists. And we have a few people that actively run it within production. Um, the user flammable, he, I believe, has run it and he helps people out with it. Um, I don't know if it's up to date. I know we were having some trouble with it not being up to date, but I think that's been resolved and it should be the latest, um, which is version 5.6.3. That's good to know. Um, is there a, is there, a, no wait, this one was already answered. Um, is there a way to break up reports by Jamf sites? So if a jam site, if your jam instance has multiple sites, can you break up your reports by the various sites? I'll take this one again. Um, um, there, there's two things that you could possibly do. The one thing you can possibly do is, as Alex was talking with the passphrases, you can give each site a different passphrase, and then in the filter here, you would have different machine groups and you would have different sites within there. So site one would have building group, uh, would have machine group one, 
site two would have machine group two, and that would be done with the different passphrases. So that would be the easiest thing to do. Um, the second thing to do would be under Jamf, then uh, you can search for a different site name within the Jamf report. And so you can have building one, and you would see all three building ones, building two, all three building twos. Um, those are the two things. And of course, using Jamf site name, it's limited to only the Jamf report. It does not extend to the rest of Monkey report. So you would have to use a machine group as seen here in the filtering to set that up. Great, thanks. Do you need to have Monkey to use Monkey report? We are a jam shop and don't use Monkey. I'll take this one. Um, in the past, you needed Monkey. However, nowadays, I believe it's starting with version 5, you no longer need Monkey. Everything is already included. Um, the only thing that is not included is a way to trigger Monkey Report to run. And Alex did go over that. So you can use Jamf to trigger Monkey Report to run, or the machine checks into Jamf, then it'll just run. I personally would like to, I personally like to use the launch daemon so that if Jamf decides to have an issue or stop working, it'll still report in on its own, even if Jamf is not working or not, or not reporting correctly. So it does not require Jamf, oh, excuse me, it no longer requires Monkey, everything is self-contained within it. That's good to hear. Um, from Jesse, first off, a shout out to Pittsburgh Mac admins. Woohoo. Um, now for the question, how does the module monkey place get enabled? It was recently updated in their monkey reports instance, but it doesn't seem to have, she doesn't seem to have that as an option. Okay, so in the admin tab, a few of these such as manage business units, module marketplace, those show system status, update warranty, and widget gallery. Those ones are um, filled in by JavaScript. And that JavaScript is part of a smaller library that is cached. So if you don't see it, reset your cache, try a different browser, log in, log out. If you still don't see it, but you see things such as widget gallery, contact us on the monk report channel in Slack and say, hey, I don't see it. We'll devil into it more, but make sure you're running version 5.5 or higher. Otherwise, you won't have the ability to even see it. Great. Um, from Matt, when can we email these reports as PDFs to our managers or clients? Um, why do we have to screenshot some of them? Um, can we autom Can you automate the reports, please? And thanks. Okay. All really good questions. Um, in the listing, let's go. Let's click on Port OS listing because I like that one. So we can click print and then save as a PDF and email that. Um, there's really no way to automate PDF exportation or automate email messaging yet. Um, we are in the process of a very big rewrite of Monkey Report, and one of the planned things is to have notifications and automated messaging as well. So hopefully we get that up and running and we can have that feature ability. It is one of the highly, most highly requested features to have automated notifications and reports, and we're working on that. Um, yeah, so we can't do that yet, but we're definitely working on that. So I would say if there's a feature request to upvote something, I, Matt, I would suggest you go there or at least um, go on Slack and ping Tuxudo um, on a regular basis for that. You have my permission to ping him <laughs> in regards to that all the time. Yep. Hmm. Does Monkey Report support the 12 inch G4 PowerBook? Um, an excellent question. I have tinkered with it internally. Um, I will not release it. Um, yes, but you have to like really know what you're doing. 
So the truthful answer is no, unless you're like me. Um, so unfortunately, no, it does not. Okay. okay. Well, I think that's about all the time we have for questions today. I do see we have a couple more. Um, so I think if we could uh, move those over to Slack for some Q and A there, that would be fantastic. I How's mean, that I just want. That sounds yeah. great. Um, I was just going to say for one of them, yes, we will share the link uh, for the slides. Um, I will talk with our friends at PSU where we're supposed to put them up there. Or where we're supposed to put them. All right. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for that presentation. Uh, very enlightening.